scripture this morning will be coming from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that his body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunningness and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and becomes itself up in love as each part does its own work. Thank you, Elijah. It's good to see everyone today. What a great time of year, and we're glad to have all of you here today. Uh, lots of good things going on. One of the sad things is about Wanda, though, and so this afternoon is the service at 4 o'clock. Um, we already announced that one. Next week, there's going to be a picnic in the park, so just be planning and thinking about that. We'll go ahead and have our morning service here, and then for the afternoon, there will be a devotional about 3 o'clock in the park. And so, if you know where Falcon Field is, that's the place where we're all going to be. We just all come and bring our own lunch. So, you are going to have your favorite lunch next week because you're going to bring it. So, whatever you bring is what you get to eat, and we all just get to have a time of sharing together and talking and having fun and playing games and all of that. So, that's a good thing. Um, the elders and the ministers have been working on something for many months now. And so, while the plan could involve a whole lot of different things, especially the plan of salvation and the, a lot of God's plans and what plan's all about, this time we're going to talk about a plan for our church. And so we have been trying to figure out what that means and what it takes to be able to make a comprehensive plan of how church functions and of how church works. And so the only way I know how to do that is to be able to talk to you guys about it. So this morning is the morning, and uh, I'm going to at least present what we've done so far. And hopefully this will all make sense and uh, everything will, will uh, work together and you'll feel like you're very much a part of things. The passage that was read to us in Ephesians chapter 4 is Paul's idea of church. Certainly Jesus is the one who builds the church. He's the one that calls us all. He's the one who said, I'm going to build my church. But what we see is the apostles are the ones who start. But Jesus was not saying that uh, he just gave it over to the apostles. No, he said, I'm going to build my church and he builds it from heaven. And he may have us working here, but it isn't that Jesus is not doing the actual construction. He's the one who's doing the building. We just get to do a lot of the work here and putting some things together. And so when we talk about a plan, we're thinking that Jesus is the guy really who's in charge of it all. He is the one in heaven who is actually doing the building, but it's going to take all of us as well and about putting things together. So he talks here about things like leadership and that God has gifted certain people, apostles and prophets. And he's given these people to be able to do this work of ministry. And so as you look at this, he is saying that these prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers are here to equip people for the work of ministry. And that's what he describes as supposed to happen. And that is in order to build up the body of Christ. So, yes, he talks about that as being a time when we would build each other up. And the reason is so that we can come to this maturity in Christ, so that we realize all of the spiritual blessings that are in Christ. And we are not just people who got in the door and said, okay, I'm going to heaven, I'm good. He says, I want you to develop into something more than that. And so the plan for the church that Jesus describes and that Paul describes here is not just a matter of getting people saved, but being able to get them to a certain maturity as they are ready for heaven. 
I think that's one of the most amazing things when we think about it, is you wouldn't be happy with your children if they never got past five years old. They got bigger. They just never learned anything after five years old. They know their ABCs and they can say a few words, but the main word they know is what time is dinner. Now, we're going to expect more than that, right? We're going to expect them to grow up a little bit, maybe have some maturity, maybe be able to do some things, maybe move out of the house. Uh, and that's what he's saying here, is I want you to be able to take people from where they are, from their very basic beginning point, where their sins have been taken away because of Jesus Christ, and bring them to the place where they are able to have maturity in Christ, able to experience the Holy Spirit, have all of these blessings in Christ, and still be able then to lead other people in this and encourage them. And so it's to be able to mature the body of Christ. We have this work of ministry. He says, I don't want you to be like little children. I don't want you to be pushed around on doctrine. I want you to know what you believe, know what you think, know what's right. And then I want you to be able to say the things, speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. And so that's one of the things that he says we do as we grow up. And so we are to grow up into Christ so that everything is held together by what all of us do. And that's what he describes. It's because of what all of us do. It isn't that the elders hold us all together. It isn't the preacher who holds us all together. But we are held together by the things that we are doing together. And that's the plan. That's God's plan. That's what we're able to see in the Bible as him saying, here's how this works. So Jesus arranges leadership in his church, and we see this purpose of the church is the collection of the people who are saved. And as we see that, they grow to maturity. They grow healthy. They grow strong. And it's one of those things that we're able to see. Uh, God likes big church. The first one, he starts with 3,000 people, and it continues to grow from there. The next number we get is 5,000, and then it's daily being added. And so God is not afraid of big church. He likes big church. God likes small church, too. Because in Philippi, he's got two families. That's it. So God likes small church, too. And it's not being one or the other. It's being healthy. Did your mom and dad decide how tall you were going to be? We want you to be six foot three. You got to eat more. Unfortunately, when you eat more, it does not get me taller. It just gets me wider. So they usually don't have a plan for how wide they want you to be. It's more for we thought you would be taller. We can't make the church more than the people who are saved. I mean, that's just all the people we're going to have. And so we can go out and teach people and present the gospel so that they are saved, but we can't make the church bigger than people who are saved. And, And so that's just part of it. Now, we can have more visitors than that. We can have a lot more people who would come to our worship service and be here with us and join in fellowship with us. And by all means, they're all welcome to be here and to be part of this. But when it comes to the church and the people who are growing to maturity and those who have actually said, yes, I want to work with this group, we can't have more people than what are saved. And so that's just part of how all of this works together. We understand what God does, but then there's a whole lot of details that are very, very important and maybe an approach on how we need to do this. So, we set out to develop a strategic plan for our church. And I want to say thanks to Dan Sanders. I don't know if he's here or not, but uh, he helped us work with this. He is a consultant that does this professionally. And uh, so he helped us work through some things. And so we want to talk a little bit about mission and vision and what we're trying to do. So it all comes from a biblical basis. Our vision is this. We want to seek Jesus and find Jesus and share Jesus. I hope you're going to see that over and over and over again. 
I hope you're going to learn those three phrases because those are the three things that we feel like are most important in the church here. We want to be able to seek Jesus, find Jesus, and share Jesus. Sounds really simple. And actually, all of this is really simple. So it's not going to be complicated at all. A lot of this comes out of a passage like Romans 7. And looking at verse 7, he says, Ask and it will be given to you, and then seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. And so Jesus here says, this is what I want you to realize. The people who seek are the people who are going to find. It's really simple, isn't it? So if you want to find God, be one of the people who's seeking him. And it's just that easy. Now the people who are given the answers don't necessarily find him. It's the people who are truly seeking God. It would be nice if we could just pass out pamphlets and pass out instructions and say, learn this set of facts, and uh, now we've given you all the answers. That is not what Jesus said. That is not how you build a group. That is not how Jesus says to do ministry. He says, we want you to seek Jesus, and then you will find. And as many times as we try to give people answers... They do not get Jesus in that process until they become a person who is wanting Jesus, seeking Jesus, trying to find Jesus. They're not going to get it. I mean, they've got the answer sitting right in front of them, but that's not what we want. We want them to find Jesus, not an answer that says, well, the Bible says this. You see, we really want them to do this. And this is what Jesus' plan is because it's very simple, and that's what he says. This is the promise. Those who seek are going to find, and it's found in several other passages of Scripture. And so the reason I think that people don't find Jesus today is maybe they're not seeking him. Secondly, maybe they're looking in the wrong place, or maybe they're looking for the wrong Jesus. The Pharisees had been looking for their Messiah for years and years and years. They had a whole history of looking for this Messiah. They had prophecies about the Messiah. And when the Messiah came, they couldn't find him. Why not? Because they had all the answers. They had already decided this is what he's supposed to be. And they looked at Jesus and said, and you're not it. They weren't still seeking. They weren't still trying to find. And so it's this process of seeking and finding Jesus that becomes most important. And so this is one of the things I want us to be aware of. And so this is most important. Allowing people to do their own search to be able to find Jesus. We don't expect you to have all the answers. Obviously, if you're still seeking, you're not going to have all the answers. And we don't want to just give you answers. But we do want to enable your search. We do want to allow that to happen. So our vision is to make it possible for people who seek Jesus to find him. Really simple. And then when they find him, they're able to share him. I told you this was easy. Our mission is to equip the family of God to be Jesus in the home, in the community, and in the world. Again, very, very simple. Equipping is one of the main things it talks about in Ephesians 4. I want you to be able to equip for these three things. In the home, the community, and the world. And so equipping the saints for the work of service, the service of bringing Christ to the world. And certainly as you look at Ephesians 4, he talks about leadership and about that being the process. And so first of all, we want to start with this progression, that it needs to happen in the home. Because if it doesn't happen in the home, I'm not sure how it can happen in the community. Sometimes we want to start with the end and say, we're going to go to the world. Let's go to your house first. (laughs) And when you got the house under control, and maybe we can start at the house, maybe we can spread to a community. Well, what's the best community? The best community is going to be church. And so when we can get church right, 
it's time to then go to the world. But I think this is part of the process that we have to understand. It starts first with home. And if we can't get home right and home to follow Jesus and home to be a place where Jesus is reverenced, where he is taught, where these are the things that are most important, then I don't know how we can get to community and go, oh yeah, Jesus is most important if he's not in our house. That's got to happen first. And for us to ever influence the world, it's got to be a community of people whose homes are right, whose homes are seeking Jesus first. And so it's a very simple thing, but that's what our main mission is. To equip God, to equip the family of God to be Jesus in the home, the community, and the world. Here's our values. And I'm just going to skip through these because these take way too long to uh, do all of these and explore each one of these. We want to be a church that's Bible-based. Scripture is very, very important. That's where we get our authority from. We want to be a church that loves God. That is very, very important, number one command. We want to be Christ-centered. That is also very, very important. He is the one that we seek. He is the one that fills us. We want to be grace-oriented. The Pharisees did not seem to be that way and so had a very difficult time with the teaching of Jesus because it's very much oriented with grace. We want to be spirit-led and find true worship because we recognize that Holy Spirit is a part of our world and a part of us. And the only way we're going to be able to live for Christ is to have that spirit. And we want to love people because whether they're lost or whether they're saved, we want to be able to love people. That's just where we are. We see Jesus doing that. He's certainly our example in all of these things. And really, that's the values that we want to have. We have key priorities. So we're getting more specific now. Worship, education, service in many different ways. Not only to the body, but also outside to many other people. Evangelism and missions. There's going to be a A lot of missions that are being done, Uh, they're going this summer, a lot of evangelism that takes place. The fellowship and relationships between other people, and so those things are very, very important that we maintain and we keep those things as a high priority. Uh, So the talking before church is great. The talking after church is great. It always makes you feel better when everybody doesn't run out the door and gone in five minutes. Stick around for a little bit. Get to know some people. Uh, It's a good thing to be able to do that. And then just administrative things, office, facilities, that's kind of a big category for just the stuff that you got to have. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Good. I saw one person nod, so I'm assuming we're okay. Sometimes people don't know what to expect, and they don't know what the elders expect. And so the elders have said, here are the things that we expect. And again, this is going to be very, very simple. They want you to be here on time. I know, there's a lot of cringe on that one. But they want you to be here on time. If you get snowed in, you have a legitimate excuse. Anything other than being snowed in, I'm not sure qualifies, okay? They want you to be part of a connect group. We're going to be emphasizing our connect groups and doing some things to redo those and to make those better. We'll talk about that in a minute. And they want you to be part of one ministry. We have a lot of ministries, and I'm not going to go over all of those and try and explain all of those, but they would like for you to be involved in one ministry. Now, you can be involved in more than one, but they would like for you to be involved in in at least one ministry. The way we're going to accomplish this is as new members come in, the elders are going to be the ones passing out the new member packets. They're the ones that meet with people as they want to become part of this church, and they're going to teach them these three things and say, here is what we want, here is what we expect. Okay? Another one of those things is worship. Here are some of the key things that we want to look at this time. 
As you know, there are two things that we wanted to emphasize this year. One is worship, the other is education. For the past several years, I've been the one over worship. And so this speaks a lot to me. And they are wanting to be able to say, what can we do that might improve and make some things better in our worship? Well, the first thing was a member survey. And we did that the end of January and the first week of February. We got a lot of good feedback and a lot of interesting things that people put down. And so the survey has already been done. We'll do one again the end of the year or first part of next year and say, well, how did we do this year? In the meantime, we're going to try a few things and see how it works and see what you think. And so we will want your feedback again. And so that's how we're going to try to measure this because you can have a goal, but if there's no way to do it and no way to measure it, I'm not really sure it's a goal. You have to have a way and a plan to proceed. And so this is how one of the ways we're getting feedback in worship. How many of you know Edison Quevedo? Okay, good. How many of you have heard Edison preach? Okay, a few of you. How many of you understood Edison when he preached? (laughs) Okay, that's even less. Edison is our Spanish minister. He is down the hall on the other side. It is all in Spanish. We want to make sure you know who Edison is and that he's part of our congregation. And so we're going to have him come over and I'll get with Edison and we'll work out a time. And you'll get to hear a great speaker who is here every week. Uh, Quarterly prayer meetings. This one was interesting. On Sunday nights, I believe, is the time when this was going to be set up. And so it's a time for songs and, and prayers and just being able to do some things with that. Jackie is the one who is going to be working to make that happen. And so he is the one who uh, is going to be doing that. They talked about bringing in a worship coordinator, a worship leader to help with worship. Like I said, I've been doing it for the past several years, but if we're going to make it better, it might need some more people paying attention to it. And so we're going to be working on finding another person who can work with that. Uh, it does not involve salary, but uh, it involves a lot of work, so uh, we're trying to find that person, and uh, we will be talking to several people and trying to understand how to make that all happen. Um, After looking at the survey and looking at some of the things that you wanted, that helps us to understand the type of person we're looking for and how to do some of those things. And... uh, There may be some time for training, so maybe next year sending that person for a training class. Family worship. You saw all the kids leave. You may be very, very glad that there's a place called TBH and CBH, the Bible Hours, where your kids are able to go and learn on their level. One of the things that may need to happen is for us to be all together as a family and be able to worship. And so there's a few times a year where we're going to see if we can't accomplish that. And Joshua is the one who is going to be deciding on those times and how to make that all happen. Typically on fifth Sundays, I let someone else speak just because it's good for you. And we have a lot of talented people, and it's a good thing to involve more people in this. And so this may be some of our fifth Sundays, and we'll see what we can do to work this out. All right, so that's the worship part. Those are things that we're actively trying to do and have a plan for doing with someone in charge and someone who's responsible for making sure that those things are done. Next one's education. So we want to have some motivational speakers who are able to come. We had Jerry Houston come this year. He was here in February, the beginning, and so that was done. We are also going to have Dr. Samuel Jones on August 25th and 26th for a family day. And so he's another one of the guest speakers that we're going to have. Education is very much a key to what we do. And just so you'll know the basic plan of how we have been able to build and how we have been able to make things happen is, as you know, it's very difficult sometimes to draw in younger people. 
So we decided we would start with kids. Those are the youngest, younger people. That makes sense. And so we built the village upstairs several years ago, and we're able to do that so that the younger people, especially the children, like to go to Bible class. And there's a place where they are able to go. There's teachers who are dedicated. A lot of you do that and work with them, and they're always happy to have more people there and more teachers to help with that. It takes quite a number of people to do that well. You only have to teach for five weeks, and I think you only teach three of the five. So it's really easy to do, and you only have one lesson. I don't know how much simpler we can make it. So it's easy to do, and it's something that makes a huge impact. And so by putting the things together for the village, making it a really quality program, it brings kids who want to be here, who are excited. I love the, the time when they're all trying to, I, I don't know why you have to come here to get money in that bucket. But for some reason, the higher you get on the step, it seems like the more your contribution makes. And it's just interesting to watch the kids as they go up. But they seem very, very excited about going to this and being able to be in our Bible classes. Parents, make sure they get here. It doesn't do us any good to uh, do the great job upstairs and have the teacher there if your kid isn't there. And so make sure what they're doing. And make sure that all of that works. And so we need some good people working with that. Leadership development is another one. And so we are trying to have some more leadership training program. Jimmy Fox did a class last fall and uh, if Jimmy's here, they're going to try and tag you again, Jimmy. So uh, he uh, will be doing a class also this fall. The elders want to continue with the summer series. And so we had meals together where people could just come here and eat. And then we would have a time for learning songs. That's very much a part of our worship. As well as having a time for family. And so that will continue this year again very specific thing on songs, and uh, we'll try and do a better job of uh, making sure that those people who don't read music have a good place and are able to join in and, and able to learn some things that's, that's more simple. Um, teacher appreciation dinner. We've talked about this for a long time, and it just kind of doesn't happen. Well, you can mark September 22nd. Jackie's going to be the one making sure arrangements are made. It's already set on the calendar, and it will be September 22nd. We want to improve our teachers, and so maybe a training class for those in a time when we're able to talk. I'm the one who's going to be doing the training with uh, some of our adult teachers, and so there will be another time where we can get together and talk about that. We want a way for our LTC students to be involved. A lot of times you'll see them here for scripture reading. You'll see them here for being involved in worship. And so as much as they're able to do, we want to make sure that happens. And so we want them to be part of this as well. And that can be one of the most important things as you're growing up to realize this is my church because I have a place in it and I do things in it. And that's both for boys and girls that they're able to be with the ladies classes and they're able to be here in worship and uh, that they are able to be developed it takes a while sorry <laughs> connect groups is another very very important thing anytime you get a larger group of people the people on this side of the auditorium don't know the people on this side of the auditorium you guys are really nice people I don't know why they don't come over here and talk to you. I don't know why they don't know you. But you guys are really great on this side. But a lot of times as you get a bigger church, you have fewer relationships. And one of the ways to make that happen is connect groups. And like I said, this is one of the things the elders would like to make sure that every person is a part of a connect group, able to be in a connect group. And so they have asked Joshua to make sure that connect groups are up and going and that there are improvements to be made because we don't have enough connect groups right now for all of you to fit. 
So we're going to need some new connect group leaders. We're going to need some new plans for teaching. And Joshua is the one who's going to have that ready by September. So if you would like to have a connect group or teach a connect group, please talk to Joshua. This is one of the things that we have as a plan for building relationships in our church. And I think it's one of the things that works especially well in being able to do that. Then there's a whole lot of things that work with the office facilities, whatever that is. We have a wire that hangs over here. Several people have asked me about the wire. Um, now I'll just call attention. Huh. It's a new decoration for our auditorium. We've decided to hang wires and no. We're going to put up some more speakers so that people are able to hear. It's one of the building improvements. One of the things that has been an issue in the past is security. And so security is going to be implemented. We have a security team now, and there has been new lighting installed at all of the doors. There have been security cameras put in, and so we want to make sure every person feels like they're safe. There's also going to be some other things that happen in our building just to make sure that things go well. The last one I've got is our website. We desperately need some help with this. In the past, Rich Roland has been the guy to say, okay, here, fix the website. That is a massive project. And it is just too much for one person to be able to do. And so we need some more ways to do input for this. And so if you are one of the people who knows about websites and knows how to do those, then please see someone and say, I'll volunteer to help with that. So we're trying to find ways where more people are able to be in that because it really is our access to the world. People are able to see that as a window that looks into here's what this church is all about. And so that's one of the things that we want to be able to present in an excellent way as well. All right, so that's a whole lot of things. Uh, hopefully not too overwhelming. I've tried to make it really simple. And it's just a matter of us being able to work together. But it is a matter of a lot of things being able to work together. And I don't know exactly what the future is going to be like. I just know God's in control of it and good things are going to happen. And so we really want to emphasize family as being important. A safe place for kids, a safe place for family as well. And we want to seek Jesus, and we want to find what God wants for us. That's the most important thing. Hebrews eleven six, the last line is, God rewards those who diligently seek him. Another one of those passages that talks about people who seek him. And so that's one of the things that we want to do. And I know today has not been a lesson about your salvation and about how to accomplish that. But I, you may be here this morning and already understand that and have decided today's the day. Today's the day when I want to confess my faith in Christ, be baptized into him, repent of my sins, and be added to his church. This is just the plan for our church, but we need people. We need all of us working together. And so what does God want for your life this morning? How can his salvation make sure that you're part of all these plans? That God is part of all these plans? That he has this strength and glory and honor that's seen in your life? So today, if you need to come to Christ, let me just ask you to go ahead and come while we stand and sing.